Greetings and welcome back. My name is Rudimentary Rob and this is episode 11 of my second season of Valheim. Uh, we're off to uh, new lands today. As you can see I have some mats on me for a portal and a workbench and a little bit of timber to spare. Uh, we have all of the uh, required equipment on us to move into the mountains biome. Now, I've located this particular mountain, it's uh, kind of around the corner from home, and uh, I picked it because the silhouette was quite tall, and a tall mountain is quite important because some of the resources that we're going to be hunting for, um, you will not find them in these lower areas where it's kind of only just in the biome. You need to go much, much, much uh, higher. Uh, it's a bit like with the swamps. You don't come across crypts uh, until you can get, you know, a swamp of an adequate size. So mountains are kind of that way, but with height. Now we're just dispatching our first enemy that we will come across. And that would be wolves. And uh, this, is, this is the biome. I mean, in the swamp, sneak... Yeah, it has some value, but um, the leeches always see through it. But in the mountains, I'm going to say this is where you are really going to want to have your sneak action, you know, as high as you can get it. Now, we're just creeping up here. Um, we've actually got better food than we really need at the moment uh, thanks mostly to that serpent stew that serpent stew is I would say about 10 to 15 more hit points above whatever other foods that we might have access to so um, I'm going to recommend that if you've got the option to cook yourself some serpent stew before you come to the mountains I'm, yeah, do it. Just do it. Now, as we continue to climb into the mountains, you're going to start working on your parkour skills a little bit. Now, when it gets really vertical, like, and it doesn't let you walk up there, you can run is the most stamina efficient way of going up something that's fairly steep. But if running does not sort of get the job done incrementally jumping periodically will get the job done as well uh, but try and save your jumping for when running it alone isn't enough now there's a bit to take on board here um, we've got our detector that we got from the uh, bone mass and as you can see it's starting to pulse a little bit indicating that there is something of value within its detection range and the pulsing is going to get more and more noticeable and more and more frequent the closer we get to the source now while i've been talking i've been mining obsidian uh, it is used for a couple of crafting bench upgrades uh, but primarily I'm just gathering a bunch of it because at some point I will start using obsidian arrows. Now once you get to the height where you start seeing obsidian, that's when you know you've reached enough height to get whatever resources you're looking for. Now also of note, um, you're probably hearing a bit of a difference in my voice. Um, it is actually on the improve at the moment. I literally have not done any um, vocal or recording for the nearly a week now uh, because I've been completely out of it with the flu. Uh, it This one actually kicked the living stink out of me for a couple of days so I've been off work and in bed the whole time. So I'm probably going to, now that I've got my intro rant out of the way, I'm probably going to be easing off and letting you enjoy the atmosphere and danger that is the mountains biome.
All right, and sure enough, the detector has got us a silver vein. Now, what you end up doing with these is you need to expose the whole thing and then you can pop it uh, if none of it is touching the ground. So that is the method I use when I'm doing the silver because silver is like five times more annoying than copper to work with because often if it's uh, in contact with the ground you'll chip away at it and you'll only get the smallest smallest of pieces that will come off uh, so this is one instance where uncovering the entire vein is definitely worth the effort so uh, you know strap in get your mining helmet on and uh, let me show you how that is done Now, drakes generally aren't anything that's usually going to kill you by itself. Uh, the attacks are pretty easy to dodge, and as you can see, the drakes don't have a lot of health. Uh, that said, though, they can, they definitely love to show up at the most inopportune times. Like, usually when you're under attack from a wolf or a couple of wolves or something like that, you'll get one of those guys show up at the same time that's when they get to be more painful um in the meantime when you're mining you're always gonna get them showing up and just you know being pains in the backside now as you can see our first uh frost resist is worn off so we promptly suck down another one uh but we're using our first rule of portals we're uh, making sure we've got an active portal whenever we're in a dangerous area and we're a little way from home. I mean, the run up the mountain wouldn't be too bad, but, um, you know, where we can add a bit of extra convenience, I'm certainly on board with doing that. Now, one worthy piece of advice for, you know, particularly early in the mountains, always be mindful of your environment. So it's very easy to get distracted, you know, deep in a, a ditch like this and not be mindful of the weather changes and more particularly the time of day. Uh, when you're early in the mountains and your, you know, resources are a little bit more limited, trust me, you're not necessarily going to want to hang around during the night. Uh, that said, however, it doesn't hurt to set up, particularly in the first, uh, you know, silver vein that you dig out, 
it gives you a nice convenient hole with very vertical sides which generally speaking nothing is actually going to want to come down into unless it gets you know physically knocked down so you can sort of set up a little temporary base like i have and give yourself a little bit of shelter and a fire and use that as a way of just getting a little bit of a rested buff going and of course with the rested buff your stamina regen is a lot better and it means you in turn you get to mine a lot quicker so uh, there's some definite advantages to doing it now we are getting quite late in the day here uh, the mountains, it gets dark pretty quick, but um, it will... We've still got a little bit of time up our sleeve before it actually properly goes night time. But, as I mentioned, you really don't want to be in the mountains at night. It's uh, potentially sometimes a little bit easier than the swamp at night. But when it's not, it gets pretty horrific very quickly so we're conveniently taking a little uh, retreat back to base to make some repairs restock and have a good night's sleep so we can come at it fresh the next day The uh, wolves and drakes both telegraph their position pretty well. Um, you will gradually get used to um, sort of zeroing in on... I mean, the drakes are loud enough. They're, they're pretty easy to figure out where they are. But the wolves are quite subtle um, and they don't move around very quickly. So sometimes you can have one quite close before you realize that they're actually quite close. Uh, I'm just having a, a last look around here just to make sure we uh, don't have any friends and it's time to pop the vein and here we go we've got our silver ore uh, we've got a chest so we're, we're dumping the ore into the chest and we're keeping the stones separate because obviously we can teleport the stones uh, but the silver cannot go through the portal so I'm just doing a little picking it up and separating it out exercise once we've done that we'll uh, run the uh, we'll run the stones back through the portal and we'll start our relay run to get the silver down the mountain I'm pretty sure silver is the heaviest of all of the metals so far. Uh, most of the other ones top out, I think, at 10 units per item. 
Uh, silver is 14, so your ability to uh, lug a whole bunch of it in one go is not great. Nonetheless, we've managed to grab some and we're going to make our way back down to the boat so we can drop it off there and uh, repeat the process. Now, I haven't sped this up yet because this is kind of our first return trip with silver. And I wanted you to experience just all of the things that can come out and uh, make attempts to enhance your day. Uh, this is also a demonstration of why bow skills can be very handy to have at a reasonable level by the time you get to the mountains. Yes, I am painfully aware that my inventory is pretty much full at this point. Uh, but there is a very, very valuable prize that we're going to be keeping an eye out for. And unfortunately, this particular chest doesn't seem to have any of it. Now, like all the other biomes where... Well, with the possible exception of the meadows, of course, but... All the other biomes, we've managed to get one new lot of vegetables per biome. So, you know, carrots in the forest, turnips from the swamp. Well, you won't find this stuff growing in the mountains because it's snowy and stuff other than, you know, pine trees. Nothing else really grows up here. Uh, so instead, you find it as seeds, but only in chests. And what I'm talking about here is onions. And onions are going to be something which will give us our next round of really good food. Uh, so do not... Do not miss checking chests. Uh, because not all of them have onion seeds in them. Uh, on some previous run-throughs I've gone through half a dozen or a dozen chests before I got my first handful of onion seeds so make sure you're uh, you're checking them all uh, so you can get those awesome seeds and therefore unlock some excellent food Now, I'm electing to be very sneaky sneaky here to take out these wolves. Uh, not so much that I wouldn't be able to deal with them in this gear. In fact, I actually go okay against wolves in this gear. More particularly because I've got the Serpent Stew and that puts me at a health pool where they can't knock me off balance easily. Uh, so, the wolves, I won't say they're trivial, they're, they're definitely not trivial, but... Um, wolves can do quite a lot of damage uh, if, you know, you don't deal with them appropriately. And look, to take one by surprise and kill it in one shot, I'll do that any time I can. Uh, because it just makes the whole exercise a lot easier. And, um, you know, you don't risk... Uh, turning into one of those silly little gravestones when there are opportunities to avoid that happening.
I've elected to not chug another uh, frost resistance mead there because I'm right on the edge of going into the black forest here. Uh, and as you can see, I get warmer and I stop taking damage. So there is an advantage to having quite a large health pool. And I did not want to be wasting uh, frost meads, or frost resistance meads, I should say. Uh, given they're a bit on the expensive side with time and resources to make. And I'm going to be relying on having a stockpile of them just in case I need to, you know, God forbid, have to make a corpse run in the future. Uh, even after you get a, a wolf cloak. Having a stockpile of uh, frost resistance meads is never a bad thing. Yeah, I notice there's a couple of uh, little plains biomes on this island. I I may actually uh, turn some or all of these into uh, some farmland when I get into the plains era. Uh, because you actually need um, plains biome for your farm to uh, do the crops that you get. Uh, but that is not for this Silver Age. That is what we get up to after the Silver Age. Ah, there's uh, Drake up there not too happy with the locals. Now these towers, these stone towers, in the mountains 
biome, you will find they'll either have one of two things in them. They'll either have skeletons in them, which is, I would say, the more common one that you come across. Uh, but occasionally, you will actually get Draugr, including sometimes a spawner. Now, given the equipment that we have, you know, Draugr aren't really a big problem at this stage. Uh, but they can sometimes take you by surprise if you're, you know, not expecting them. Yes, trophies in the mountains biome are going to be really important. Uh, quite a lot of the crafted items like gear actually involve a trophy of one kind or another. Uh, in the meantime, this is me demonstrating my very rudimentary abilities to fall from high places. Now, apologies for anyone who has any uh, aversions to heights. Uh, the mountains biome is definitely not going to be doing you any favours in that regard. what we have here we have a uh, drake nest now that is an egg you can pick that up you can actually take it home and mount it if you want to uh, but it does by itself weigh 300 so not really just something you're going to randomly choose to loot and carry around with you they are instead used as part of summoning motor but i'll go into that more later now, just down here, we can see a skeleton, and we can see this great big fella who wants to end me, and apparently he wants to end a few of the locals as well. These things are going to be the bane of your existence in the mountains, but there's a couple of things to be aware of. Number one, they are made of stone, which means you can do this your pickaxe and as you can see from the yellow numbers your pickaxe actually hits them very very hard however they can hit you very very hard which is why I used my bone mass buff uh, which reduces physical damage before I started my combat with uh, this guy Try and jump on him because it's a bit harder to connect with these legs because uh, he inevitably ends up pushing you back a little bit when he takes a swing. Uh, whereas if he can jump to onto something a bit higher, uh, it makes it a lot easier to get on top of him and do a lot more damage. As you can see, those few hits, I've already taken off half his health. There is rather a lot going on. Uh, I've elected to skip the pickaxe bit for now, as my mace just does normal damage, and I elect to finish him with my mace, uh, which just leaves me with the uh, remaining drake, who I will be able to deal with with my bow.
So here we are. Uh, we have successfully murdered quite a lot of locals. And we've reached the end of this episode. Bit of an unconventional one because I'm actually wrapping up in the middle of the mountains. But the next episode will pick up where we left off. So in the meantime, my name is Rudimentary Rob. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself a fantastic day.